ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to game number three of this best of five grand final between TNC Predator and E Home. It is, of course, MLP Dota, joined by the lovely John X Fire. John, first two games, E Home take them convincingly. Game number three, tell me what a TNC need to be doing differently. They need to definitely play a bit better as a team. They've been kind of disoriented, I feel. Especially in game one, you can see it. Um, they had a really good start. They had Armel, that Bloodseeker, taking over. He had Gabby with decent form in his void, finding all the chronospheres he needed in game one. But it just kind of fell apart in that mid game. They just weren't as in sync as much as Ehome was. Game two, it definitely showed as well. The coordination just wasn't as strong from TNC. They were playing a lineup again that came online much, that was supposed to come online much earlier, but just couldn't really find the best tempo, always drawing even, and, you know, eventually at the end, Ehom just pulled away. So for this game three, I'm hoping they kind of fix that coordination up, play better as a team. They do have, you know, a decent starting draft to open with. Ehom goes back to that IO gyrocopter we've seen time and time and again, but TNC goes up straight, you know, immediately pick up that void again as the counter, and this time they pair it up with the Ancient Apparition. Yeah. I mean, they go a bit different, but... We saw this in game number one. Like, the Io Gyro was coming out from Ehome. They went for the Void in preparation for that. And Ehome did not give a flying... Really, they didn't give a crap about it. Uh, they go for the Ancient Apparition this time. I guess that works a bit better against the Io, but... I'm not 100% sure about that. Uh, John, I might have to go quiet for just a second. Do you mind just talking about the draft? Sure. So, again, that face is Void coming out. It is the usual combination. For TN, uh, you know, that we that most teams seem to go when the IO gyrocopter is picked up. I think the key point with that void is usually the pairing with that lich. Without that lich, it's it feels a bit lackluster because you can't gain that exp advantage. With an ancient apparition, you might be able to slow down the healing from IO for sure, but it just feels like the condition here is really not. Not at all about just winning the team fight. It's also about winning that lane with the creep deny that Lich brings. And you know, Ehome is really aware of that. They always ban that Lich out when they go for the Io Gyrocopter. Thank you for that, John. My apologies, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Ogre Magi, though, John, I believe you've probably already talked about this pickup. Not quite yet. I was just going on again about the void and what happens with it. They do pick up the Ogre, and Ehome does pick up the Centaur War Runner. So. Ogre Magi, again, is very strong lane support. You usually see it just really dominate in early game in that lane. As the game goes on, it, the focus goes into buffing up your cores, which, in the case of TNC, they do have a core that will benefit greatly from that added attack speed with Faceless Void. So, you know, the synergy is there for TNC. You know, the Chronosphere is a good setup for the Ancient Apparition Blast as well. But Ehome does have a pretty solid draft. They can use that center to engage and disengage. And now they pick up the Shadow Demon as well for Ehome, with TNC having that Lina. The Shadow Demon, it's going to be a problem for Void. In that Chronosphere, Mike, if you just don't catch that Shadow Demon, what are you going to do in the Chronosphere? That, John, and may I remind you what happened yesterday. Uh, Ehome ran this exact same combination against, against, the, uh, against the side of IG. You remember that laning phase? The disruption oh, yeah. to the hoof stomp? Uh, mind you, that was oh, yeah. a Drow who was quite defenseless. Oh, excuse me? Am I wrong? I'm, I'm pretty right, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, I, I um, believe that was the case. Yeah. Mind you, it was against the Drow that time. It'll be much harder against the Faces Void with the time walk, but man, that is a scary combination to see again coming out from Ehome because they pull it off so well. Ten seconds remaining. Nevertheless, final ban out now from the side of Ehome. Lena, of course, being picked up for Cuckoo again. He does seem to really enjoy that hero, unless they are planning to give it away uh, to Armel instead. But I, I'm sure it's going to be Cuckoo, Lena, this time around. What do you give to Armel, though? Like, it, it feels like his impact has been slightly lacking throughout these games. Yeah, I'm really not sure. He does tend to enjoy... I mean, they have been picking heroes that he does tend to enjoy, right? The Bloodseeker... The Kunkka, I'm not sure if you go back to either of those heroes here. I think the Kunkka could work out with a Void. I'm Again, I'm just not sure if that's going to be enough to plug in uh, the issues that your draft will have, which is, I honestly think, wave clear and damage. I think I guess the Kunkka could work out there. It's a good amount of control as well. 
So I guess if Ehome doesn't ban it out, we might see TNC just go back to that Kunkka. It does work out in this case. You can hold someone down from that relocate. You can, uh, you know, hold someone down from running away as well. The combination in that Chronosphere is pretty good. Great setup for your boat and your torrent. So I, I think that there's a lot more value to a Kunkka pickup here than there was in the last game. Yeah. Let's see if it works out, though. Ehome, their final ban, they are thinking about it quite a lot. Again, if they win this game, it's all over. It'll be a 3-0, but TNC, they don't want to allow that to happen. They want to try and bring it back their way and try to force it all the way to game five. They will get rid of the Husker, which I feel like is a fairly smart fairly smart ban excuse me, from Ehome. And one more to go. Mind you, though, there is a Broodmother still available if either team wants to pick it up. I would argue there aren't the best counters on either side either for that. You know, the Gyrocopter doesn't come online early enough to, to really burst down those Spiderlings. But Ehome, you never know. They might just grab it themselves now for the mid lane. Yeah, I feel like either side could really run it. You'd probably be... Slightly amiss picking it for Ehome because, again, that Lun Lina can kind of clear through those uh, spiders okay. Uh, it's not the greatest, but it can clear through quite well. The gyrocopter can, as you mentioned, do it as well. Although in the laning phase, it's definitely not going to be too much of an issue if there is a brood for TNC. Yeah. But we'll see. I, I think they have a lot more options for that mid. TNC um, hmm. oh, oh, hold on a minute. Themselves. Oh, my. Uh, that's got to be a counter pick. That's a counter pick right there. So they get rid of the Husker and they're like, hold on, we left the Kunkka. Let's just take it for ourselves and use it against the side of TNC. I mean, Ehome, I, I like their thinking, John. That is a dangerous pick uh, to make for themselves. And it's some good combination, I'm sure you'd agree, with the other heroes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So really good setup from that Shadow Demon for your combination to come out. Good setup for, you know, just uh, having someone relocate really aggressively or, you know, having them stay in place after the relocate with the X on a teammate, holding people down in place, counteracting that faceless void in his chronosphere if he doesn't catch you out. So now, not only does Gabby's void have to catch out Gyrocopter or Io, it needs to catch out the Shadow Demon or the Kunkka as well. Possibly, ideally, both, because you're not going to get anything done if you are in that chronosphere and Kunkka still has his torrent boat or if Shadow Demon has his disruption. You're just not going to get anything done. Oh, certainly not. TNC, final pickup for them. How do they turn this around? I mean, you can still go the way of picking up a TA right now. Again, that Broodmother's there, but that's not great against the Kunkka. Whew, it's, a hard, it's a hard pick for TNC right now, I feel. Ah, oh, Mel. What can he do to turn this around? Oh, give him the Ember Spirit. Fair enough, but John... They do have the X there already uh, to deal with that Ember. So he, there is a chance he won't be able to remnant away from these team fights. I don't know. Who, who do you think this draft favors? I, I feel like Ehome still have the better draft going into game three. Yeah, I mean, they do have that counter in the void for the Io Gyro, but there's way too much to deal with that Chronosphere that I can't feel confident in the potential of it. I mean, Ehome's draft is definitely a bit more rounded. They have a good amount of control. Really good setup for all your spells with a Shadow Demon. Good sustain with the Io. Good scaling with a Gyrocopter. I, it's just worrying for me. I'm, I'm looking at TNC's draft. It, it doesn't feel like it's going to work out too well, especially since that last pick, Kunkka, just absolutely ruins Armelt's potential for jumping around, really. That X will just cause so many issues for him. And I don't know. It's, it's just very hard for TNC to pull off what they need to pull off in this game. Gabby needs to Chronosphere at least three heroes every time if they're in a 5v5 team fight. Three of them have to be in that Chronosphere. That's no easy feat. You know, and depending on that entirely is just super hard for TNC. So I'm a bit worried. The potential is there, don't get me wrong. This isn't this isn't a complete outdraft. It's just that TNC's draft is definitely much harder to execute compared to Ehomes. We'll see what they can pull off here on the side of TNC. Again, they do need to win this game out. Otherwise, Ehome, they take the whole thing in a 3-0 sweep. And it's kind of crazy to say, Ehome, they were the underdogs in this matchup coming up. Like it, you would have never expected them to be putting such a decent fight up against TNC. But 
this is what happens, I, I suppose. Let's see how this game number three goes. At the very least, we've had two great games to start us off. Hopefully, this third one will be the same. And TNC, a lot of work to be done on their end. We'll get started. Yeah. If I may, John, th this Ancient Apparition, it's not a support we see very often anymore. How do you feel about it in the laning stage? In the laning stage, honestly, it's you lose it's okay. It's not amazing. Uh, it depends on who you're running it with. It looks like it will be probably... I'm uh, I'm just a bit confused because the two supports are working are walking together. But I I believe Ninja Boogie should probably be, be laning with I'm I'm assuming it's gonna be Cuckoo. I think that combination works a bit better than uh than AA plus Void, although you do leave Void with a dual melee lane, so that's gonna be maybe a bit of a rough time. For Gabby, I'm not too sure. It's still an ogre. It's going to be annoying. Regardless, it should be able to trade just fine. Are they actually just going to run a solo offlane for Gabby? Uh, no, nah, probably. A, no, they might not. TP someone up top. No. Nah. I don't think they would. That, that, that's pretty rough. You can't really do much as a void solo. The, the cooldown on your time lapse or your time walk is just a bit too long. At level one, you know, it's 24 seconds, so every half minute or so, which means you can't really survive and trade as well as other heroes would. Well, they are going to put Cuckoo in the uh, in the safe lane, it seems. We do have a bit of a pause coming out, Ehome. They are having a few VPN issues, so they want to try and get it sorted out right here, right now. Of course, friendly beeps coming out, which is very nice to see, and it does look like we have the good... Uh, we have the go-ahead. Gabby's not going to have an easy time with that top lane either. Like, yeah, you have a better time than Cuckoo probably would against the Ayo Gyro, but we've seen this exact matchup in game number one. He did end up having a rough time. Yeah, it, it can, you know, it can go pretty hard as well. So you, you have to watch out in these lanes. Fate Beyond, this time on that Centaur. I mean, he's done so much work. In every single one of these games. In fact, in every e-home game, I'd go so far as to say. So, seeing him on a center, I, you know, I'm not... I'm not... I'm not worried about this offlane for e-home. Especially with Y for setup. It actually feels like it's going to be a rough time for the Lena Ogre Magi. Which is usually strange to say because Ogre Magi is such a good laner. Um, it's just that the synergy of e-home right now is pretty strong. Well, again... A lot of pressure on this game number three. Faith Beyond White, they will make their way against Tims and Cuckoo. You've got to really watch out for that disruption into the Hoof Stomp because it's a lot of harassment and really big kill potential coming out from E-Home. So we'll see if they can catch Cuckoo or Tims out. I mean, Cuckoo, much, a much easier target to kill if you do manage to catch him. Tim's a bit tankier on that Ogre, but nonetheless... Once you have got that Soul Catcher as well, that 30, that 20% bonus damage, man, it hurts so much. Meanwhile, top lane, Gabby and Ninja Boogie, they're going to be up against that Io Gyro combo with Ego there on the Gyrocopter. And of course, the mid lane, we will see ASD up against Armel one more time. And Armel probably feeling kind of strange to be up against his signature Kunkka. And he will be playing that Ember Spirit himself. Yeah. This lane should probably draw even until level 3. I'd say... I don't know. I feel like Kunkka still kind of wins out again because he can abuse that deny mechanic with his Tidebringer if he so opts to. Oh, bot lane Otherwise, though. Faith Beyond about to drop one more. He salves up, but he's in trouble. They'll find him. It looks like they went in for the disruption into the hoof stop, but TNC, they turn it around on them. You can't also really underestimate that double stun lineup that TNC has in this bot lane. They can dish out a lot of damage and now they'll get started again onto Y. Mind you, Light Strike Array wasn't available, but Disruption will save the day for Y for the moment. TNC finding themselves first blood. A great start for them. Yeah, definitely a very good start, especially in this lane where you kind of expect the pressure from Centaur and Shadow Demon to just overtake. But they are keeping pace, they're keeping them in check, applying a good amount of harass as well, and making sure Fate Beyond doesn't go too well in the offlane. 
top lane as well. Not going too badly for TNC right now. Ego pretty much has matching farm with Gabby in terms of last hits. The mid lane, both heroes were falling very low. Armel getting a bit lower than ASD. ASD can always just X himself and TP back to the fountain where Armel he has to rely on that regeneration that he has. But he will bring up three tangos for himself. And he will be alright for the moment. Though there was a gank rotation coming in from Y, it seems, on that Shadow Demon. But he will get scanned out and he will back off back to that bot lane. Yeah, could have been a very clean kill opportunity. I think ASD going home really stopped him from making move first, so a bit of a wasted opportunity. There was a moment where this, they didn't quite scan, he was already there with that haste. But didn't go for it, it's fine. Uh, e home now going really deep at that top lane, Mike. Yeah, they almost ended up getting Ninja Boogie on that Ancient Apparition, though that Salve really cancelling out that last hit from Ego. Gabby, he has a time walk, he'll be fine. But they want to try and force this out, it seems, and even the Spirit's coming in. Gabby really being forced back in that bot, in that top lane. Their bot lane, it does work. Again, they will find Tims this time around with the double edge. They're both beyond, getting very close to falling. Cuckoo, the Salve comes out, the stun barely connects. Those damn neutral creeps still hitting up on both of them. And Faith will manage to survive. There was no mana left to try to any spells on the side of the Lena. And now we're running a tri lane, apparently, top lane. Yeah, interesting choice from TNC. They're going to bleed a lot of XP. Again, you don't want to be at a level deficit against the Iron Gyrocopter. You want your Void to at least keep pace. Usually you want him ahead, which is why you usually see the Lich. But this time around, I think you have to bear with just drawing even in terms of XP up against this duo. Never they mind. do smoke up though. Yeah, they're going to go mid lane instead. They want ASD on that Kunkka. I mean, if you get the Fire Blast off with the Cold Feet, you should be alright. Bot lane Cuckoo, he will end up dropping. You leave the Lena alone like that, the disruption will come in and they'll easily find that combination. And I mean, Cuckoo, he's had two terrible laning stages in the first two games. Surely he doesn't have a third one, but... I mean, it's yet to be seen. That smoke rotation found absolutely nothing in the mid lane either. I think it comes down to what TNC decides to prioritize. They usually tend to prioritize uh, our melts farm a lot. Oh, so Cuckoo. gets caught out again, John. That soul catcher, extra damage. We've seen this before, John. You can't leave them like this, and even Faith tipping Cuckoo now. Yeah, there's really nothing the Lena can do by herself. But, I don't know, I feel like they really prioritize Armel and Gabby's farm more than Cuckoo's, which is... You know, it doesn't help Cuckoo's game. He has, what? It looks to be Trample Boots queued up and then six clarities. Well, even in mid lane, Armel, who end up falling to ASD. ASD hitting that level six mark before Armel could, and all it took was an X into a boat to get the job done. Not the greatest of views now. TNC 1 to 4, 5 minutes in. It looks like bot lane as well. Tim's falling very low. Almost dies to the Shadow Poison. They had 4 stacks on him. But at the very least, Cuckoo will be a lot safer with this Ogre Magi here. And it does look like Faith Beyond and Y. Just going to back off for the moment. Y just going on a warding mission and perhaps going into the mid lane. Though... Speaking of mid lane, ASD may find himself in trouble. Ninja Boogie is there with the cold feet. He's currently in that Invis. The Armel can't really find the opening, and now he might just be dead. Torrent will not connect though. Slide of Fist, a very nice dodge coming out from this Ember Spirit. Well, Gabby. Forced the Time Walker out again. Ego. That level 2 Rocket Barrage is still so much damn damage. And it looks like he'll be alright for the moment. It's a pretty big stack coming out as well from the IO, so Jarpopper will be able to, you know, accelerate his farm even more. It's just concerning because as it stands right now, this ancient apparition apparition position five that you have isn't really doing much at all. Like cold feet is so easily dodged just by literally walking away. And the Chilling Touch, like up until the Chrono is available on Gabby, it's not going to do anything. Like they, they can't find the uh, they can't find the initiation quite yet. 
that is the issue you have with the ancient apparition. It it amps up other magical heroes. I feel like you do want to level an ice vortex. Oh, bot lane. But sorry, John. They went they went on Faith Beyond. Looks like Faith Beyond is just way too tanky though. Oh, Lightning Laguna Blade. Excuse me. Does go out on Y. Does end up taking him out. A nice little play there from Cuckoo. Fire Blast coming out. ASD does rotate around. Has the X available. Doesn't quite commit it onto Tim's. And he'll make his way back. Though this does give space to Armel to start farming up on this Ember Spirit a bit. Yeah, he definitely needs to play a bit of catch up. Armel, 46 to 5 compared to our Conquerors. You know, 50 to 12. He's had a good run. He's really slowed down this Ember. You, you know, Ember Spirit as a hero does want to come online fast. He wants his mid-game items done and ready so he can slip in and out and do a lot of damage. Feels like his timing is going to be slightly shafted by this mid-matchup, but not too badly. I think he's not too far behind. Well, I'm ill now. Has a double damage rune for himself. May want to go for a gank attempt. In fact, he does draw the line out. They did scan out Ego and the Io, but they do head towards the east side of their jungle. Armel, um, with that double damage, he does dish out a lot, but it looks like they won't go any deeper. Of course, they don't know the shrine isn't actually available, so they probably could have actually gone for this, but... Looks like E home. They'll be safe for the moment with this Jaro Io. Yeah, they've, they're definitely getting the start they want for Ehome. They're not being shut down. The Jar Copper has pretty good farm, 3.6k, about 700 gold in front of the next TNC hero to him. Which means that, you know, with, with these level 6s, they're online and ready to go. Yeah, you can't say the same for Cuckoo though, bot lane. He ends up dying again. Uh, nice rotation coming in from ASD. He just manages to get the X. Didn't quite hit the torrent, but didn't need it. Like with the X, he just threw the boat in. They had the follow-up damage anyway with Faith Beyond on that Centaur. And it looks like now Ego going to start heading to the bot lane. They've drawn a line out to Tim's. Tim's going to spot them out though. Ego does have the homing missile coming. But it looks like they're just going to start stealing stacks off and creep waves off. Stampede was committed so it looks like they wanted to make the jumps on Tim jump on Tim's but they don't end up making it in the end. Yeah, rather curious choices coming out from Ehome. A bit of a waste on that Stampede. That is a pretty long cooldown at level 1. So, really strange, but maybe some miscommunication coming out from from Ehome. Thinking that they were going to go in on Tim's. But, you know, Ego is just happy enough to just steal some camps. Which is fair enough. I mean, as a dryer copter again, all this farm does not hurt you. At all. <laughs> No way it hurts you. And they still haven't done a relocate gank, so that option is still up for Ehome as well. Not really using that ability quite yet. I, I feel like this is a good time to do it though. Right when TNC is still really weak, Ninja Bogey doesn't have a 6 yet. Cuckoo's pretty shut down, no items on him yet. It's a good time to go ganking, Mike. We'll see if they can get the job done. Gabby, going for a Mask of Man is still his farm. Okay on this void right now. Faith Beyond actually, bot lane. Just farming up some creeps. He was falling a bit low, but he'll be fine. Just trying to get these neutral stacks. Meanwhile, Ehome just focusing on that farm right now. They understand. They don't need to rush this. They went through this in game number one. And they're more than happy for Ego to just farm up on that gyro. Mid lane, though. Ninja Boogie going to get caught out. We'll end up getting the kill on ASD. Though... The Dyer as well managed to get the T1 tower at the top lane. So, 2-6 to six now. 3k net worth lead though. And at the bot lane, there's that disruption you're looking for. ASD misses the torrent though. Has the X. The boat is not available. In fact, can they get the Centaur? Faith Beyond? No, they can't. He walks out of there safely. And you had that relocate coming in as well. They found Tim's on the back line. Another two going down to this bot lane for the side of TNC. Yeah, really clean killed so far. Ehome again being very responsive and very active on the map. Just being where they have to be, when they have to be there. Well, Chrono is available on Gabby Shrine usage. Nobody taps it. They will take down the Io, it seems, with that AA Blast. Ends up missing, though. 
Oh no, they will maybe end up getting the gyro. At least they got the, the AA blast on him. The boat is coming in. Armel, he does dodge it with the slide of fist, and now they're going to chase down this void. Gabby, he does have the time walk. ASD, though, does have the X's as well. Gabby will just try and man fight. Armel will TP back. He does have a remnant, and he wants to come back. And in fact, they ping it out on the side of E home. But Gabby appears hard, and Tim's comes in. They will find another pick off on for the IO. So a slight mistake to begin with, with that Ice Blast jump, but they end up finding two very nice pickoffs on the side of E-Home with that first Chrono. That is how TNC should be playing. Again, playing around that Chronosphere and the combination of that, of that you know, uh, Ancient Apparition with the Ice Blast. I feel like Ninja Boogie doesn't need to be that far forward. He doesn't need to stick to the Void when they're going around like this. He needs to stay back a bit to get some size on his Ice Blast. Otherwise... You know, you're stuck in situations like that. You try to catch two people in. It's way too small to catch them at the edge. Absolutely. So you really do have to keep some space between you and the void. I can't disagree with you there. Looks like the T1 bot tower. We'll start going down, but as well as that TNC, we'll, they'll go for a straight trade with the T1 top. Armel um, was pushing in the T1 mid tower, but ASD does make his return back in there. They may actually have time to defend this T1 bot tower if they really want. Ego can't really take it that fast as the Gyrocopter quite yet. And they have rotated quite a few heroes over. The Tims does get scouted with those spirits. Ego throws out a homing missile. We'll back off. And, I mean, they saved the T1 for the moment, but there are rotations coming in. ASD runs right in there. Now the call down as well. They're all in the tree line right now. ASD will go for Tims first. The, the boat does come out, though. It does miss. Because he couldn't X him back in here. Here comes Armel. He wants to turn this around. Gabby's there as well. They're going straight onto this Kunker. Mind you, he had the boat buff. He is pretty tanky. Ice Blast will not actually connect, though they will end up getting the Gyrocopter. Now Cuckoo about to fall. They're going to lose their Io in the process. ASD still so low. Now here comes Faith Beyond. Goes straight on Armel, but there's the Chrono. Gabby just got it off cooldown. And they're going to find almost a full team wipe on the side of E-Home. ASD actually returns by himself. But he might end up giving away his own life. Gabby gets a time lock. Torrent will be dodged. Gabby keeps going. Has the Mask of Madness. Another time lock at very unfortunate timing. But nevertheless, TNC. Four very nice pickoffs for them. 1.5k gold going their way. And they only lose two in the process. Yeah, really good trade for them. They are playing right on the edge of the cooldowns that they have. Again, Gabby. Just managing to get that current sphere off cooldown right then and immediately popping it really secure that team fighter them. So pivotal kill, it's going away of TNC, helping them play catch up. It is 8 to 11. It's still a lead for Ehome. 1k gold advantage for them. And you know, if you're Ehome, I you shouldn't be too unhappy. Again, that's just TNC playing around that chronosphere. What you should be doing is punishing them when that chronosphere is down. You have relocate, you have a centaur who can make initiating quite easy. They are quite, you know, they're fine with just farming, but if they want to make something happen, they can. Well, they're getting jumped on IO right now. They will take him out. The gyrocopter as well, remnant in from Armel. He's looking for those chains. Stampede committed that they're going to find him. Ego, he's left by himself. Ice Blast comes in as well. Armel finds himself another double kill, and now they're chasing for more, though. Ehome, they're trying to find the return. They're going for that void. Do they have the damage? Yes, they do. Still, though, I feel like that does make it so TNC come out on top. Like... Yeah, sure, your Void dies, but you lose a T1 mid-tower on the side of E-Home, as well as two heroes. And TNT, they're probably going to be very happy about that. Yeah, I don't think you're going to be too unhappy, and again, as TNT. While Gabby is dead, sure, he, he dies, but Chronosphere is going to be back up when he's alive, and they can force another team fight again, with no Stampede to really impede him for, for a bit while longer. So that option's open now for TNT. If I was E-Home, again... It comes down to their prioritization. They are prioritizing farm and ego, which is perfectly fine. If they feel the need to fight, the time to fight is really while that chrono is down, which, you know, it has been down for a while now. It looks like Ehome is, again, just satisfied to get their farm going for themselves, which is perfectly fine. I feel like their lineup does, you know, scale quite okay into the late game, and ego is just stealing all these stacks anyway. Yeah. Ego. It just really is no point to stack in the neutral caps anymore. But still, 10 to 12 now. Net worth lead, only less than 1k for the side of E-Home. 
It's the probably the best start TNC have had around this 17 minute mark. So far in this series anyway. Um, we'll start pushing out the T1 or T2 tower at the top lane. He will have backup as well. And this may just be given the way of TNC now. He doesn't look like Ehome are, are interested at all in trying to engage again to this Ember Spirit. Especially because you look at Ego and Io right now, they are still sitting at level 10. And we know the power peak really comes out when you hit that level 15 on the Io, where you do get the Aghanim Scepter. Granting bonus via tether. They will go bot lane into Ninja Boogie. Mind you, again, he does have assistance in the form of Tim's. Ice Blast does come out. Now the rotations as well. Ego could be in massive trouble right now. And it looks like he will be. He runs straight towards the T2 tower for some reason. And he will end up dying. The pickup will go to Armel on that Ember Spirit. Really strange decision from Ego. Like, after that kill, he ran left instead of right. I'm not sure why. Was he trying to secure a kill? I know he moved slightly left to secure that kill in Ninja Bogey, but... They're gonna go on Gabby. Way left, huh? Noob Stomp is there, and that is a quick bunch of bursts coming out. Tim's though. Will he be alright? Looks like Armel back in the team fight. Really wants to help out. Misses the chains, though. So, they will lose Gabby. That'll be it. And now a smoke comes out. E-Home. They want to reinitiate, it seems. So, Faith. Already breaks it. And Armel... Realizing something's awry, he does go back. But ASD is also coming in. He does have a full pipe up on this Kunker. Let's see who can who he can find. It's strange, right? Because it, it feels like TNC recently have been taking all the team fights their way, but it feels it still feels like Ehome are the ones that want to aggress. Yeah, I feel like Ehome definitely wants to be a bit more aggressive. Their farm is again. Your gyrocopter is keeping pace with the faceless void. You kind of want to be ahead as a gyro. It looks like they might actually just be waiting for a BKB before they finally commit to relocate ganks. Because as of yet, this IO gyro is really just farming up in the jungle. Not really being too active in the map. They've gone here and there. Mainly really just farming creeps on the other side. On the radiant jungle, taking away their stacks. But being aggressive as a duo, not really. Not, not, not so much. Maybe once or twice, but using Relocate? No. Oh, ASD gets jumped on. Boat immediately comes out, but there's the Ice Blast. He does have a lot of help, though. This could be dangerous for TNC. And it looks like ASD almost trying to bait them in to come in for more. He does just walk away safely. Bot lane. Looks like Faith Beyond. We'll go into Tim's maybe. Relocate gank is there as well. They're going to burst down this support Ogre. And perhaps go for that T2 tower at the bot lane. In fact, no. They'll just back off. Back to safety now, but... Well, I guess that's your first relocate gank. Like, they just find it necessary to take down the ogre. I mean, that's something. And it does secure them a bit more gold on this jar copper who is now starting to get ahead. Again, you do want to maintain a sort of net worth advantage in the early game as a jar copper. That's really your uh, one of the shining examples of what you do. You just out farm a lot of heroes in the early game. And getting that good early gold lead should help you out. Uh, you do at least want to finish that BKB soon. It is done, pretty much. So, Ego will have that BKB in team fights, which means the damage coming out from that uh, Ancient Apparition is not going to be as amazing. The damage from Cuckoo isn't going to be as amazing. You're going to be controlled much less. So, you can do a lot more in these team fights, as long as you're not in Chrono. Well, Chrono is available, and TNC, they want to go for a team fight right here, right now. Faith Beyond showing in the mid lane, they have smoked up. He doesn't have much backup here, so this is an easy pick for TNT, but they're going to run into Y instead. In fact, no, they found ASD as well. Boat immediately comes in. Now Y, can he really help out? It looks like they actually land a two-man boat. Chrono not coming out quite yet, though. The Apparition, apparition going to be in trouble. Now the Chrono, he hit two with the Ice Blast. Looks like Gabby goes straight onto Faith Beyond. Now Armel, what can he do here? ASD almost takes down Gabby. There's a disruption from Y to help out. And now the Relocate comes in. Again, they go on Tim's. The BKB up on Ego as well. They'll find two for the sake of one. And the homing missile does hit Armel. Now the Torrent as well. No Remnant available. Light Strike Array did end up connecting on ASD, but it won't matter. Ehome find a better trade. They lose faith beyond, but they get three themselves. And that was at the cost of a chrono as well. So not the worst thing for Ehome either. Definitely not the worst thing for Ehome. And that does mean that they can do whatever they want now. Because 
Without that Kunin Spear, I feel like PNC just can't. Cuckoo just fell asleep at the top lane, Johnny. He was just standing there, probably looking at the other side of the map. Faith tips him, says thank you very much for that. Now mid lane, they may get initiated on again. Bo comes in though, does miss on Gabby. But Gabby has to back off, relocate again, comes in, Ego. Bursts him down, the time walk was available, but he held on to it. And now they found more in the form of Tim's. Four go down. That is, that is definitely what you want to see from Ehom again. When that Chronosphere is down, Ehom's free to do whatever they want with their relocate. And they get a couple of good kills. They manage to push down that tier, tier 1 mid. Now all the tier 1s are down for TNC as well, which gives a slight advantage to Ehom as they maintain their bottom tier 1, not really the most important tower. The issue is right now that means their jungle is definitely a bit riskier to farm in. You know Faith Beyond, uh, excuse me, not Faith Beyond, you know Ego is still holding to that 10 second BKB charge. He hasn't needed yeah. it once yet. He's been in three different engagements now. Not once does he need to commit it. So you still got that to be worried about as well. Yeah, that's a plus side for Ehome. I think every time TNC has been engaging, they haven't been jumping Ego and the Ayo in quite a fair bit. They've been jumping ASD's Kunkka. They've been jumping, you know, Fate Beyond Centaur. But this Io Gyro has had free reign to just come in afterwards and clean up. And, you know, by then, you don't really need the BKB because all the big spells are on cooldown. Yeah. As well as that, Faith Beyond still going for that Agnium Scepter. Looks like we did have a bit of, bit of lag issues going on, but Ehome picks it up. Now TNC just asking for a second. That Agnium Scepter is going to do a lot of work as well. Like, it's going to be so hard... To kill off Ehome when you've got an Io, you've got a Kunkka boat buff, and you've also got that Aghanim Scepter Centaur. Yeah, it's going to be pretty scary for TNC to go up. I think their damage is already kind of slowing down a bit. The Ember Spirit does still pump it out good, and your Ancient Apparition can amp, it, amp that up quite a fair bit. But it feels like it just won't be comparing to a Gyrocopter who manages to farm up and a Kunkka who does go for full damage item builds as the game goes on. So there is really a timer on TNC once again. However, they do have the power of Faceless Void at the very least. That Chronosphere will be relevant the entire game, and Gabby can scale quite nicely. He's just not really there in terms of farm. Uh, both Gabby and Armel just behind, uh, really far behind actually, Ego and ASD. So they have some catching up to do to maintain net worth parity. They are 7k behind as a team. A lot of work to be done here for TNC, Mike. Yeah, but they keep going into this Mask of Mana Shadowblade build as well on Gabby. Like, they're not going for that late game style Void. Which is exactly the same thing in game 1. Like, he doesn't go for like that Battle Fury so he can farm up quickly on that Void. I, I, I've got to say, I don't know if I agree with it. Because you have the advantage in the late game as that, as that Void. But you, you're lacking so much damage because you didn't farm up well enough because you didn't have a Battle Fury. You went for the Shadow Blade Mask of Madness instead. I think if you go for the Battle Fury in Void, that really just slows down what you can do in that early to mid game though. Which means the Gyrocopter Eye will just overtake you by then as well. I mean, they'll, they're going to outdamage you in that early game if you do go for that Battle Fury. It takes a while for a Void to farm it up. It doesn't help you in team fights too well. And, you know, you're better off with Mask of Madness for both. Bot lane, Stampede, Hoof Stomp is there. They almost kill off Ninja Boogie. Now the Chrono, though, they found two. It's the Io Gyro relocate. They're going straight for that Io, though. Ego, he already BKB'd up, and he's going forward. He wants Cuckoo. They really enjoy taking this man down. They get the X off, and they will find the trade. And now Tim's will be the next target. Faith Beyond will have the blink up in just a second. Though he may not need it. The nice, nice dodge from Tim's. Sitting in that tree line. Does escape. Armel did not actually have a TP there though, John. So he couldn't make it to the team fight in time. Yeah, it looked pretty good for TNT. They had nice counter initiation on that gyro Io. All they could really do is kill off the Io. The BKB was up on Ego, which meant that Ancient Apparition's Ice Blast again doesn't really do much. It does go to, you know, BKB, but the oh, ticking this. isn't there. Look at this bait. Oh, the double hoof stomp comes out. Faith Beyond into the boat. ASD on a mega kill, mega kill streak now. Armel going to try and find a return. Why? He will be the target. They do find him. Now Gabby jumps on ASD. 
the Faith Beyond still taking a lot of damage. He doesn't seem to mind, and now he's got an IO. They found Armel with that X. He has no remnants left, John. It's on cooldown, though he will manage to get out with that Yules. But the Hoop Stomp comes in from Faith Beyond. He'll find him. He takes him out. ASD just standing there baiting Armel. He knew he was in the tree line somewhere. Baiting him to come out while the Faith Beyond and that white Shadow Demon just stuck around in the other side of the tree line, waiting for him to initiate, and you just see what happens. They, they just... Yeah. Yeah, they're not finding the trades, TNC. They definitely aren't. They already expended Chronosphere. They're going to have to wait a little bit longer until that option's back up. Looks like the X is there again. X Torrent Boat straight onto that Ogre. You have Y there as well. ASD not backing off at all. Takes out Tims. Now they're looking for more. They found Cuckoo, I believe. And well, with the Hoof Stomp, the Double Edge, the Light Strike Array will make it in time. Now the Ice Blast, excuse me, that was Ninja Boogie. Cuckoo was at the Tier 3 Tower. But still, your top lane's being pushed in right now. Ego on that Gyro. The Io is there as well. He's at the level 18 mark, so he has the Scepter bonus. So the side gunner is up and running. Nice Laguna Blade out onto Y, but it won't even finish him off. He had the, Glim the Glimmer Cape available. They will save the tier 3 for the moment, but... Man, that is not... That really is a, a bad position for TNC. Definitely is. Playing, you know, on the back end already at 27 minutes in. Your lineup really wanted to be online a bit earlier. I think it comes down to the fact that Armel couldn't quite overwhelmingly mi win mid lane and Cuckoo just absolutely got shafted bot lane when his supports left him. So he's not having the most impact that, you know, he'd want to have in this game. It's just not there. The BKB's coming out from Ehome as well. Just kind of mitigates the damage that they can pump out with Armel. Faces Void by himself does not do enough at this point in game. And it's going to be a while until he can do enough damage on his own. Like. He's going for a BKB first for Gabby, and then looks like a Silver Edge. I'm not sure about that itemization. Honestly, I, I really feel like you want the damage item. I don't think you really need the Silver Edge in this game. Maybe, you know, just a Daedalus straight up, or try to save for... I don't know. A Maelstrom would be also pretty decent. John, I think this time he does need it. I'll tell you why. Faith Beyond, he has the Aghanim Scepter. They've got the Boat buff. With the Aghanim Scepter Stampede and the Boat Buff, they're already at 90% damage reduction. Then you've got an Io with 20% with the Overcharge. So they've got 110% on at least one hero, 110% damage reduction. They commit the Chrono at the bot jungle, they'll take down Faith Beyond. A very nice pick off for the side of TNC. But if your whole team gets the Boat Buff, and they, all, they also all get the Stampede Buff, your whole team is taking 90% less damage. Yeah, it's pretty dumb. It's pretty dumb, Mike. And they don't have damage anymore on TNC side. Sure, they have the burst from Cuckoo. And they have the magic damage coming out from Armel. BKBs just counteract that. And there's already a BKB on the Gyrocopter. Um, Kunkka probably actually won't care. He does have a heart. They do take out Ninja Bogey bot. But, you know, he's died too many times now. I don't think that's... Uh, I don't think that's a factor anymore for TNC. They do want him to farm up though. They gave him Midas. They, they managed to give Ninja Bogey Midas. He's not fighting too much with it. He's trying to keep up with XP. I don't think it's working out quite well. He's not going to be able to get that level 15, level 20 fast enough. And the Agnus is definitely just a pipe dream at this point. Yeah. Well, while you were talking about that, John Ego, he picks up an Eye of Scardi now. There's still 7k net worth lead ahead, but man, this gyro. Hitting very hard, very tanky as well. Ah, uh, Mel, he's going for a Lincoln Spear. Like, it's just so defensive coming out from TNC. I, I don't know if this is going to work out for them. They're going to try and fight this Roshan. They will at the very least scare Ego off, but he wants to go for a team fight right now. He still has a, a BKB charge available. Faith Beyond again fighting Ninja Boogie, so you will take down that Ice Blast. I don't believe Chrono is actually available, and it's not for another 30 seconds. X is there. Who have they found? It will be the Ogre Magi. So now both supports are gone. Buyback was there from Ninja Boogie, but it does absolutely nothing if you've got no Chrono available. And they're going to go straight into that Roche Pit again. Yeah, no real reason to back out. You forced the buyback on 
Ancient Apparition. Again, you do, you are aware that the Chrono is down, although it, it's going to be up in a fair bit. Not soon enough, though. Ehome yeah, does grab the Aegis in the end. And ASD's got an X off onto Cuckoo, though. He does miss the Torrent. But even in oh, that, God. TNT, oh, no, Chrono thing. is nice to relocate. They'll find the Io, they find the Gyrocopter Aegis. That's what they needed. The ASD finds Ninja Boogie in the back lines, but he gets Yules up. Cuckoo trying to back off. TNC, they do find a nice set of picks for themselves. Actually, they may find ASD as well. He's going to get frozen. But at the very least, you get the IO. Chrono's down, though. That was a very, very uh, unfortunate relocate. They relocate right into TNC while they were smoked. Immediately just get Chrono to two and get wiped out. Very nice uh, reaction time from Gabby. Uh, just simply cleaning up, although he could be in a spot of trouble. Fate Beyond is scouting him out. Yeah, nah. he'll TP away though. I mean, it is only Faith Beyond right now. Like, I, I don't think he can solo kill, but... I don't know. You never really know then. So, Cuckoo, he will pick up the Aghanim Scepter for himself now. So, at the very least, Laguna Blade will pierce through the BKBs. Which does seem like it will help a bit through these engagements to try and burst down the Gyro. But yeah, we'll it'll see. definitely help out. Again, they do kind of lack damage in TNC side. So having that pure magic, uh, pure damage option is quite helpful. Just eat through the HP regardless of mag uh, damage reduction from resistance and armor. So that's pretty good for TNC side. Again, right now... Gabby is still working towards the Silver Edge. Uh, it's not going to really boost his damage by too much. Armel is itemizing for a Lincoln, so he's going defensive first, which I understand. He has been caught out quite a fair bit, a lot by the X's. This should help him out a fair bit and allow him to just go in and out much easier. Looks like TNC having a few issues. They do throw out a pause. Damn team speak, John. It's damn team speak again. <laughs> Looks like Tim's in the uh, the enemy jungle right now. We'll just hide in the tree line for a bit. Faith Beyond actually going for a heart of his own now on that centaur, just to become even tankier. And they will go for a smoke on a home. Spirit Vessel does get finished off onto Tim's. Gabby has taken his spot up in the trees in the top lane for the moment. A home. Who can they find? Armel would be probably their primary target at the top lane. And they do draw the line out. They are going to go that exact way. Smoke still has about 10 seconds to go on it. Though Gabby in that tree line, he's got the Chrono waiting. It seems like he knows this is happening as well. And the smoke will break. Do they know though? Gabby, he spots them out. But the hoop stop immediately comes in. Faith Beyond found him. Now the Torrent Boat as well. He tried to go for the TP out. Faith Beyond, he knew the exact spot and just hoof stomps him straight through it. Really well played from Ehome again. Just the awareness to understand where in the heck the Void would be sitting or where in the heck any hero would be sitting in that position. And you know, finding the Void of all heroes, really unfortunate for Gabby. He does not have buyback, his gold is very far away from it. Ehome could probably just kill him off in the next fight and then really secure a push. I mean, they might go right now. Relocate. Bot lane. They will go again towards Ninja Boogie. He's pushing that bot lane out. Now you've got no Ancient Apparition for 70 seconds. We'll bring up the buyback status. And in fact, nobody on the side of TNC have buyback right now. Absolutely nobody. That, that is uh, not great news. Absolutely not good news. They can get a push off from Ehome quite fast here. You know... TNC has to defend with their lives because if they lose this game again, that's it for the grand finals. We home, they're taking the first racks of the game, and now Armel throws out the slider fierce. The light strike array will stop, slow them down a bit, but here comes that flat cannon and the boat to make sure they can sustain any damage and they'll just walk out. It's just that easy. 15k net worth lead now for Ehome. Bring up Dota plus win probability, and it reckons 93% chance of Ehome pulling Ooh. off this win. That is a that's some pretty bad odds for TNC right now. Very bad odds. They'd have to play perfectly, really, to catch Ehome out now. They do lack the damage now to burst anyone down. I mean, there's a heart on Ego. 
Uh, you mentioned there was a heart being built up by Fate Beyond as well. There's a heart on the Kunkka. Mike, none of these heroes will die in yeah. Chronosphere. No, they won't. No, they, they really won't. Even like Io, he's going for an Aeon Disc. So until you put that on cooldown, he's going to be safe. Bot lane, Armel, uh, playing around with Faith Beyond. Trying to just finish off the T1 Tower, which has no backdoor protection. He will get that. So they find a little bonus for themselves, but we're 36 minutes in. That T1 was still standing. Cuckoo is there. Hoof stop from Faith Beyond. He blinks in. And it looks like they won't be able to find him. Roshan as well. Still a while to go. We're going to wait two and a half minutes before we find out exactly when it's coming up. And Faith Beyond just about to pick up enough gold. In fact, he does now. He'll go finish off the heart for himself. You've got the Mjolnir Boy. there on the gyrocopter as well. How do you kill these people? Like, you've got an Ice Blast, but it's got to be bloody perfect. I, I know, Mike. Take a look at Faith Beyond. 5.1k HP with his 20 talent. With oh, and he goes on our melt. Lincoln Sphere is there. He has Remnant, surely. Yeah, he does. He'll be fine. Perhaps just trying to force one of them out. John, I don't know how you killed them. I, I think at this point, you really, really have to just pick one off. But again, Ehome at this point is sticking together very tightly. I'm, I'm not sure how, if it's even possible for you to catch one of them out of place. Because they're just sticking as two to three when farming out, for the most part. Especially in these lanes, they don't split up. Even if you catch one of them alone, it's such a tall order. You're going to have to pop your Laguna Blade. You're going to have to pop that Ancient Apparition ult. You're going to need Chronosphere as well. It you just requires so much to burst these heroes down now, Mike. TNC is really, really needs to step up the damage game here. But I'm just not sure how. Do you go Divine Ray Pierce on the Ember Spirit? I, I think that's one option. If it gets really desperate. I feel like that's the only option right now for the side of TNC. Just go get those divines up and slide a fist to your heart's content. Uh, they may run into the gyrocopter. If they can find this kill, it would be very nice, but he does have backup. Though they are going to run in. Ice Blast will connect. This is the chance they needed. The BKB comes out, and now the hoof stop. They're going straight for Armel. He yules himself up. Can he actually get out of there? He can. Just barely. He'll survive. And now the rest of TNC. Call that a bit of a win. They back off, although they have found Tim's. Boat comes in. Now the Chrono, though, on the relocate. Gabby, he'll get the Io at the very least, it seems. And now the Gyrocopter Ego, he's going to man fight this, but the Light Striker A comes in. Laguna as well, but there's Y with the disruption. Ego falling so damn low. The Cold Feet as well. Armel jumps in. They take him out. He's gone. Can they go for even more? Armel, that Lincoln's protecting him just for the moment. The Slider Fist, he doesn't have remnants left. In fact, he has won the Ice Blast. They'll find the Conqueror as well. ASD falling so low. TNC, they're actually turning this all around. Armel jumps back out. They will end up finding ASD though. That was a big kill streak going their way. Now Faith Beyond, the only one left. He's going after Gabby, but Gabby, he'll be fine. And that is almost a full team wipe coming out. The only person that doesn't go down is why on that Shadow Demon. Uh, how? I don't that know. was really I impressive for TNC that they managed to turn that. I think these relocates from the Iron Gyrocopter are really not paying off. You cannot jump that void if you can't control him. And your stuns do have a delay. Maybe if Gyrocopter went for uh, something with a stun, maybe straight up... I don't know. Even a silence would work out well. But they have nothing. So the moment they relocate in, uh, Gabby just needs the Chronosphere. And he gets a kill. Ah, uh, Cuckoo? Don't, is he really going to die to a solo Shadow Demon? Oh, no. Like... <laughs> oh, my. I mean, you know, that was Disruption. That was Soul Catcher. That was the Purge. John, it's a position 5 Shadow Demon. <laughs> I, I, those illusions do a lot, Mike. They deal 75% of the damage you deal. John, we're 40 you know, minutes and... in and he died to a support. Yeah, but... It, it's it's a shadow demon. You can't you can't just be alone there with no BKB against a shadow demon. You what? probably need the tools. At the very least, it gives space for TNC though. They'll go for the Roshan now. It looks like Ehom are well aware of this, but are they going to be there in time? It doesn't look like they will though. Faith Beyond is not even up yet. He comes in now. There goes Ego. Can he snag the edges? No, he can't. Gabby's got it. But Armel is falling very very low. He eats the cheese. He will be safe. Another nice win coming out from TNC.
Though I believe the Roche kill... Yeah, the Roche kill actually went to the Dyer, so they don't get the gold, but they got the important parts. The cheese, the Aegis is there. That was the second Roshan of the game, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah it, was. it was. So it's just the cheese. And, you know, TNC is definitely starting to get some momentum back into this game. Somehow killing off these heroes that pretty much look unkillable right now, Mike. Gabby, will time walk off. TP will not be cancelled by that homing missile. Meanwhile, they do get scanned out on the side of E-Home. So the smoke rotation won't work out. TNC, these past five minutes or so, they've been doing everything right. If they can just hold on a bit longer. BKB comes out on Cuckoo as well to help. Win probability now. 76% chance the way of E-Home. Oh, yeah. So it's gone down by quite a bit. Yeah. And, you know, TNC is picking up momentum. They can stay relevant as long as the Void gets these pretty decent Chronospheres on the Iron Gyro. So you as E-Home now, I feel like you don't go too aggressive with your Relocate. Just uh, just push. Just just get a good team fight like you have been and get a good push going. Although, you know, it should be harder to person down now with that Aeon Disc Cup on the IO. Oh, TNT, though, they feel the momentum. The Chrono bot lane. They found the Gyro IO. The Ice Blast comes in. It goes straight into the Gyrocopter. They haven't found the IO, though. Cold Feet was there. Ego. Boat comes in. The BKB there as well. And Gabby needs to back off. X is there. They found an Ogre for their trouble, though. Gabby turns it around, but he needs to get the hell out of there. But Faith Beyond is looking for him. He'll go after Ninja Boogie. The Light Strike Raid will try and turn this one around with the Silver Edge. Relocate. They're trying to find Ninja Boogie, it seems. They won't find him, but they find an even better target. Aegis is still available. He baited out the Time Walk. ASD cancels the animation on the X. I don't even know you could do that. So they'll get the Aegis. Gabby. Silver Edge will save him for the moment. Faith Beyond looking for a random hoof stomp. It doesn't work out for TNC. They end up losing their Ogre. They end up losing their Aegis. But they haven't lost the game. I guess you'd call that a positive. Oh yeah, it's definitely a positive, Mike. Still definitely in it, although it's a 10k deficit, but... You know, Dota Plus, well, it went down to 80 to 20% now, Mike. Which is... It, it's still something. It's better than 3% chance of winning, 2% chance. They are facing issues now. That Chronosphere, you can't aim for the IO anymore without A on disc. On, you know, as long as it's off cooldown, you cannot burst the IO. And you struggle to burst down this uh, gyro copper at this point in the game. 4k HP, 26 armor. Not the easiest thing to eat through, Mike. So it's starting to be an issue again for TNC. They had, e even if you just catch those two together, it's very hard to burst them down. Again, that comes down to a lack of damage from the builds in TNC. You just don't have damage in the void yet. You don't really have too much damage on Lina yet. And Armel, it's an Ember Spirit at 43 minutes in who is still focusing mainly on that magic damage, so it is kind of mitigated at this point. Gabby is trying to work onto a butterfly, which should help. I'm not sure if it's the butterfly you really want or just straight up like a Daedalus or something like that, just to uh, pump out as much burst as you can. But the butterfly should help nonetheless. We'll see what they can do. It does appear they're having a few issues on the side of TNC, which is why we're in a pause right now. Hopefully, it won't be too long of a pause that we're waiting out on. We do have the go-ahead. Void. Still a great hero in this late game. Get that damage up. It can make all the difference. So, I mean, the side of E-Home right now, there's still 12, 12k net worth ahead, and they have, uh... And you're basically looking at 6 slotted for almost everybody. Pretty much at this point. You've almost got what looks to be... What is that on Fate Beyond? He's going for... Is that a Hex? Looks like a hex, right? Yeah. Should be. It is. Yeah. So he's going for a site of vice of his own to get some more control. And that's going to be an issue again for TNC. They do not have anything like a Lincoln Sphere except for 
RML. He's the only one with one of those, so you can control Gabby up quite well. Oh, BKB comes out mid lane. Gabby, he have he has the Chrono. He doesn't commit it quite yet. Holds on to it. ASD looking for an X attempt. Doesn't find it, but look at TNT. They're ready to reinitiate, and RML goes in. Doesn't get the chains off on any heroes. But TNC, they feel more confident now, it seems, because Ehome are the ones backing off, which is really interesting how this has changed. The net worth lead, it still remains there for the side of Ehome, but they look a bit more scared now of TNC than they did about 10 minutes ago. Yeah, I think they're really just worried about throwing away their lead. If they get team wiped once, that could pretty much make this game dead even, and that does... Put TN that does put E home in a worrying spot because again, you're still playing against a void, right? You'll always have that Kroon Sphere up, and when it's up, you can maybe clean off a couple of heroes. It's still a bit hard at this point for the itemization everyone went for, but eventually he'll be able to clean up in that Kroon oh, Sphere. Oh, they found two massive pickoffs, so again, no Chrono. In TNC, they were there, but they probably thought there was some backup there as well. Mid lane. Armel getting a lot stronger on that Ember Spirit. Both teams really just hugging opposite sides of the map. They will find a double damage on Ego now, so perhaps they'll want to have a go with this. That bot lane will be the target, it seems. Armel will show up to defend. Illusion. Meanwhile, they found Faith Beyond with the Yules. Now the Light Strike Raid does not connect, though. Will they make the jump? The blink is there anyway. Though Gabby is coming in. Chrono, he finds three of them. Stampede is there though. He loses a lot of damage from this. But he's going after the gyro. The tether, Laguna, they do get the disruption off. Can they burst him? He has the BKB, so the light strike rate does absolutely nothing. Who do they go around on though? ASD, he's trying to find Armel. Ego waiting out that Ice Blast passive to wear off, so his heart will heal him up. And now they have found the Kunkka, but ASD is so damn tanky. Nobody dead through this engagement yet, though. Which I can't believe I'm saying that they have found Ninja Boogie. He will Glimmer Cape up. Now Armel again going in. Faith Beyond misses the hoof stop. Cooldown is there, but it will connect on absolutely nobody. That Ice Blast, John, it almost ticks Ego down, but it wasn't enough. Just barely. Yeah, and... <laughs> we're, we're stuck at the point where... Both sides are just, I don't know, they feel a bit hesitant to commit all in. It's just like a defensive trade here, a defensive trade there. Even when they're trying to play offensive, it's not an all in trade. So it's really just a bit more passive than you'd really want to expect. So both sides are taking their time in this game. We are at 47 minutes now, 20 to 34 so far, 14k ahead for Ehome. They've pretty much got most of their items up. I think they're just waiting on Hexes to come out. Maybe if they get those hexes up, we'll see some action. Um, looks like ASD is going for that crit build as well. So a lot more damage coming out from him. Well, they might find the gyrocopter. He's copying a lot of damage, but disruption will be there. Stampede also committed Light Strike Array, though. He's still so low. They jump in with Armel. The boat comes in now. Ego, he'll turn around with the BKB of his own. They'll get the tier 3 tower. Tim's. Trying to go in. Chrono not available for another 10 seconds. So they found Faith Beyond. ASD turns around. Light Strike Ray. He's just so damn tanky on this Centaur. Disruption again. Saving him for the moment. Ego trying to heal up with that heart. He is healing up quite fast. Though Gabby. He finds the four man Chrono coming out. Aeon Disc again from the IO. Saving him though. And the Chrono does absolutely nothing though. Light Strike Ray. They're holding ASD in place. The X is there. They found Ninja Boogie. No buyback on him. Oh my. No follow up after the Chrono, John. I thought it was a massive one coming out. Just wasn't quite enough yet, but they aren't out of this game quite yet either. Gabby, what can he do here? It's really all up to Armel, it seems. Ice Blast again going out onto Ego. This is what they need to do, though. The boat comes in to re reduce that damage. Now Laguna Blade does hardly anything with that Glimmer Cape as well. Disruption to Drog. Stun, Faith Beyond jumps in though, he gets used up straight away and now Ego jumps in. Ninja Boogie, he just bought back for this. It looks like he does go down, but now Ego, he's falling quite low himself. They've used up Armel. He will be alright, Stampede again comes out. They're gonna find this bot, Rax. ASD, Armel going in, doesn't find the IO though. The disruption was there in time, ASD. 
He has been stunned up, but he's so damn tanky. He BKBs up as well. Going after Cuckoo on that Lena. She'll dodge with the Yules. My god, what a team fight we're seeing. Light Strike Ray comes out. Now Gabby again jumps back in onto Ego. But that Io keeping him alive and Faith Beyond jumps in as well. He's so low right now. But the Disruption Dodge, they'll get the Io at the least. But can they get Ego on the Jari? Yes, they can. Armel finds a double. Now Faith Beyond being chased down as well. The Fire Blast is there. The Raid Boss though. Can they really kill him off? The Spirit Siphon ticking him down quite hard. And it looks like he is just a sitting duck now. No Stampede available though. It's taking so many heroes. But with that Silver Edge, it'll make it a lot easier. They got that bot Rax. But they lost a lot on the side of E-Home, John. A, a nice nice punishment from TNT, I want to say. Yeah, that definitely was a pretty good punishment for that really long overextension from E-Home. They really just pushed their luck there. If they did win that team fight, find the kills they needed, it definitely would be a different story. They might be aware of this Roche. They'd buy back in the two years. Yeah. Well, TP in. But this might be even better for TNC now, because they know if they take down that Jaro Io, there's going to be no buyback available. And that would that'll probably be the opening TNC needs. See what they get done though. They can't afford to give the Roshan away either. Looks like Y is just going to drop an Observer Ward, try and scout this out a bit. Side of TNC, they also smoke up. Chrono is up. Butterfly is up on the Void. He's actually going straight into an Aghanim Scepter next. I feel like this will be a pretty nice pickup for him, because every time that Chrono is down, Gabby just can't do anything. But if he has it up every minute, that may make all the difference. So they will get started on that Roshan. That bot lane being defended by Armel. He can always remnant back into this team fight if necessary. How did the side of E-Home initiate into this? They don't have Faith Beyond for another 10 seconds or so. It's Roshan slowly dropping. E-Home may not actually be aware, judging by the way they're moving, but no, they are. Why? He comes in, Shadow Poison at the very least will scout this out. That Roshan though, 1.5k HP now. Very slowly but surely, the Gunner Blade committed, they'll take him down, and now Ego, force the BKB and get the hell out. Nice Laguna from Cuckoo to make sure they just burst it and get rid of it immediately. Now refresh so shot is, as well, will be available yeah. on Gabby. That means we do have the double Chronosphere coming out for Gabby, and we have TeamSpeak issues once again, Mike. This is why you don't go on TeamSpeak, John. Like, I mentioned this earlier on, it's just so ancient. Well, that was a quick fix. But again, that Roshan just really puts TNC back in the play zone. Again, Gabby's managed to find items he needs. He does have some damage on him now. He is looking a bit scary. And once he has that Agnims up as well, he will be able to have that Chronosphere every 60 seconds. So he's going to be an issue. It's going to be... Much more active for TNC, much easier for them to defend their last set of racks. Oh, oh. relocate bot lane. They will find Ninja Boogie. John, does this remind you of the TI6 match between E-Home? Uh, and I can't remember who it was. Uh, it was EG, excuse me, where they ran the Dagons. They had the Ancient Apparition with the Ice Blast. They had the Void with yeah. the Chrono on Universe. Remember that? It feels sort yeah. of similar now. Like, we're getting pretty late in. Cuckoo's going for Dagons on the Lena. We have the Ancient Apparition, we have the Void. Ehome, I feel like they've they felt this situation before. They definitely have, Mike. We'll see if they can, you know, close this game out. Because it's just one set of Brax love. Octarine Core now on RML. Well, oh, they move him forward as well. This will be a massive pickup. Ego, he can't afford to die back. Boat will be there on the Tim's on that Ogre. Disruption coming up from Y. The Chrono, it will be there in time. Can they deal the damage? Io can't heal him. He's still alive. The refresh side is there. Chrono again. It won't come out quite yet. Gabby, he chases for more. Can they burst him though? The Armel, he TPs in with the Remnant. He will find him. That's a dieback on the Gyro. And now they've lost Io as well. He pulled back throughout all that. ASD is going to be in trouble. We'll get disrupted. Faith Beyond jumps back in. They need to slow this down. They'll get the Aegis. Though Shadow Demon in trouble as well. Why? About to drop to Armel. Not quite yet. He will walk out of there though. Armel has a slight of fist. Won't find him. Though they have found ASD by the looks of it. The buyback will be there. But the Gyro Io, that's a dieback. They're gone for 100 seconds each. 
it's gonna be scary defending here again tnc can just push straight down mid at the very least it's, they still have to eat through a tier two their side lanes are shoved in so a couple of heroes will have to stay behind so that does slow down the push just a bit but a really beautiful defense coming out from tnc they pretty much negate that net worth gap that was there a while ago and you know they definitely come back bouncing into this game Faith beyond there's on ninja boogie but gabby is there mind you no chrono available they want to jump in on this the boat coming in as well gabby disruption will actually save the day for gabby although it wasn't even his disruption meanwhile he goes on to y and now they're punishing faith beyond he's been left alone and he will end up going down. No buyback available on him either. This is what TNC needed. They're looking for ASD. If they get a dieback on this man, it could just be all over. But for the moment, it looks like TNC, they're just going to hold on. They've actually dragged that net worth lead all the way back their way. It's actually 1k their way now. From almost 20,000 gold. It, it, this is just unbelievable. Yeah, Why? they're definitely holding with their lives. Trying to go on to Gabby. Though Y should just get picked off here. Armel is there. The Glimmer Cape will save the day for the moment. Remnant is on point, but Armel has no idea he was there. The Slide of Fist will hit him once. Really does no damage, though. There are two Raxes behind right now, but... TNC somehow kind of find themselves in a lead. Dota Plus... Still think 76% chance of E-Home winning this game, John. But I feel like Dota Plus may be kind of over underestimating TNC in this matchup now. And there's a lot of potential for TNC again. Once, uh, because Gabby has damage now, it's actually pretty hard to survive in that Chronosphere. You do have to commit the boat and the Stampede for that. He has a double damage on, on this Void, John. He's got the Chrono. He won't initiate. He thought about it. You know he did. He couldn't find the right timing. The Daedalus now coming up on ASD. Feels like he needs to be dishing out more damage himself. We're at the 56 minute mark now for game number three. Ego. Probably the longest game we've had in a fair bit. Definitely the longest game of the series and... The closest game of the series so far, Mike. We have not seen a network swing like this in quite a fair bit. Not from that huge of a deficit, I think. My e home sticking together. And TNC. You've got to really respect how far they've come in this game. The Aghanim Scepter hasn't been picked up yet by Gabby. He's just holding on to 5k worth of gold right now. Looks like he wants the MKB first. He realizes he needs a bit more damage to dish out onto this gyro. Of course, Ego is sitting there on 4k HP when he gets chronoed. It's just not the easiest target. Faith Beyond does yeah. actually have the full scythe of Ice up as well, by the way. Yeah, he's had a last time as well. I think one thing Ehome should consider doing is just spamming out illusions to push. Maybe that is an option they could go for. Gyrocopter is pretty strong for that. Pretty decent here to spam out. Not, It's no Luna, but you can still get a push going quite well. Just forcing it out with that. I, you do have, you know, the Shadow Demon. It's just free illusion spam. Probably consider it otherwise. It looks like they're trying to build up a bit more. Maybe trying to get some more items on. I'm not sure really how you itemize anymore, because you're pretty much 6-slotted in Gyro. Uh, you do have room on your Io to buff him up. Your center is also pretty much done, for the most part. Kunkka, I guess you could sneak in an item there, swapping out the BKB. It's a possibility, but I'm not sure really how often you'd be able to swap that out. Will Faith be on bot lane? They don't know he's in the tree line right now. Gabby. Oh, they'll jump in straight onto Cuckoo. The Stampede there as well. They really want this kill onto the Lena straight off the bat. And it looks like they may find it. He's gone though. Chrono is on the relocating Gyro Io, but the Aeon Disc comes in clutch again. Now the boat is there, though. The Io will end up losing his life. Gabby falling quite low. Armel um, jumps in, but he may lose his own life. The Remnant is there. The Yules as well. He'll save himself for the moment. Cuckoo bore back throughout all this as well. The only person who hasn't bore back quite yet is the Ogre. 
Funnily enough, the Ogre is going for his own Aghanims and they find Ninja Boogie. Both huh. have buybacks. Oh. Yeah, at the very least, they both do still have buyback. How often do you see an Ogre trying to rush an Aghanims? That is uh, probably the first time in a long while I've seen an Ogre get Aghanims in a game like. Not just in any pro game, like literally in any game. Well, they're gonna go for the Mega Creeps now. Ego, he hits so hard. Can they defend? They have a refresher orb available. He does use it. He wants to throw out this corner right here, right now. Though the last hit three is gone. Gabby jumps in, finds three with it as well. Ego has been left alone, but the boat is coming. Gabby, he's losing too much to the flak cannon. Way too much damage from that flak and Ego. Well, there's no buyback available. It looks like they will lose Tims as well, but they end up getting the gyrocopter. The buyback does come in. The IO is still down though. No buyback available quite yet on him. But they will find Armel. He will get Y. And now they're going for more. Faith Beyond will be the target. Hoopstomp comes out, but they're perma stunning them in this mid lane. ASD looks to be in trouble as well. Looks like he will end up falling. Oh, God. Ego, though, he's waiting. He just bought back. He wants to go after Armel, but he's got no lockdown for it. And the pings come out, telling Ego to get the hell out of there. Oh, my. That was a full team wipe on Ehom. It looked pretty good in that defense after they killed off the Void, but without the IO, Gyrocopter just can't sustain. He did not go for lifesteal after all, so all these right clicks are not pumping him back his HP. Even if he did under that Ancient Apparition Ultimate, it's just way too hard. The control coming out is really dumb. AoE Cold Feet. It's a stupid talent, Mike. You saw how much work it did there. How many times they got proc and stuck in place. How dumb is that? That was amazing. Amazingly dumb. And that really kept them in this defense. If they just keep forcing fights in this tight point with that Chronosphere, with the AoE cold feet, how do you move? They've ac they've <laughs> when actually, do you pop your BKB? They've actually got the uh, the Aghanim Scepter as well and the Ogre now. Uh, by the way, Armel's sitting at 13k gold right now. He could probably buy himself two Divine Rapiers, almost. If he really wanted them. It looks like he may send the courier out soon to get one. I mean, you'd assume so, right? He doesn't need he doesn't need 13k to buy back. Nah, oh, but it does look like he is saving up for a uh, Dagon, like a Dagon five. Oh yeah. my god, they're actually doing it. They're trying to push E home back with this Dagon build that AG oh did in, two, in TI six. I can't believe oh, we're man. seeing this again. E home oh. having nightmares about this. This is, this is not looking good. I mean, you know, Eohom's tanky, sure, but in the past few fights, it doesn't look like that matters when your BKBs only last so long and TNC has all the control in the world. They have all the control in the world. John, there's only two buybacks on the map right now. One is Armel, one is ASD. So each team has one. They did smoke up on the side of TNC. Except they won't go for anything quite yet. Roshan though is up. A very important target for either team. Though so damn risky. Like you've got literally nothing to buy back with apart from that Armel Ember Spirit and that ASD Kunkka. Like the team that loses this, it really could just be game after that. Like they could just push through the mid lane and finish the game off. Yeah, most definitely, Mike. If you want to take a look at something surprising, take a look. 33 to 43, 63 minutes in. 11k net worth lead for TNC now. That's 11k, insane. Mike. That's insane. And Dota Plus still thinks 71% chance E Home win this. There will be a smoke rotation coming out. Who do they find, though? Armel. He is at that top lane. He does have a runner back at the base, though. They've got to really lock him down, and TNC, they're ready. They're going until they go straight onto Ninja Boogie. Now the Stampede as well. Though they find nobody quite yet. The boat coming in. They're all grouped up though. They've got to be careful with that Chrono. And it comes in. He's caught the four man with the Ice Blast as well. It looks so bad for the side of Ehome. But they're all still alive. They'll lose Tims on that Ogre. And the Chrono wasn't quite enough. But that AoE Cold Feet. Freezing everyone up. They'll get Tims. I can't believe they found nobody through that Chronosphere, but there just was no backup damage. Now Ego gets himself a double damage, goes straight into that Roshan. Though it's still dangerous, TNC are still looking pretty good throughout all this. 
And they've been pretty clutch in these engagements. Armel, can he snag another Aegis? Gavin could just jump in. Both he does have there. that refresh chrono. Does use it though, he won't get the Aegis in time. Gabby, he can't afford to die right now. Faith Beyond, Hoof Stomp, it does connect, Gabby! Oh god. He hesitated, Ice Blast does come in though, they end up getting ASD, but he has the buyback available. There is no way to buy back for this Void, he just does, he needs 1.5k gold for that. Meanwhile, ASD, who's he found? He actually gets Ninja Boogie on that Ancient Apparition, the TP. It gets cancelled with the Scythe device, and now Mega Creeps are incoming. They are going to make sure they take these first. Though so Armel, can he defend this by himself? He's only got himself and Cuckoo right now. The boat, it will connect onto Cuckoo. He's going to go down as well. Armel against the world. Though he does get scythed by his stuff. Slider Fist is there. Lincoln Spear has been broken. He's down. He does have a buyback. He's going to try his best. Though the T4s are going down. And now the Ancient as well. Slider Fist comes in, but they call GG. Oh. Armel. How can he defend by himself, John? It's way too much. E home, they take this three to zero, and they Holy will be your God. grand finalists for the Asia Pro League. Yeah, E home takes the victory trio, our champions for the Asia Pro League, as you mentioned. And what a series, Mike! First two games, first one, you know, it was a bit of a back and forth. TNC had a good time in the early game, but TNC e, e home managed to close it out. Game two was much more dominant, and this game three. What a, what a swing around. TNC had a lot of fight left in them. In the end, you know, it, it just wasn't enough, but some really interesting itemization. A really good fight put up by TNC. I'd say this was a really worthwhile series, Mike. Yeah, it was certainly a fantastic Grand Finals. You've got to give it to both teams, John. I mean, TNC, they only dropped one game throughout this whole thing. And Ehome come out of nowhere and 3-0 them. I can't believe I'm seeing that. I can't believe I've been saying it. But at the very least, both teams did it in such an entertaining fashion. They didn't play this boring, just, you know, plain meta that we keep seeing with Weavers and Necrophosis and things like that. They go all these interesting drafts. All the team fights were exciting. I'm sure the viewers were pretty happy watching that. I'm sorry to any TNC fans. Obviously, I, I know it must hurt for them, John, but you've got to give it to both teams. I mean, especially E-Home. Out of nowhere from the loser's bracket... They come through and just 3-0 the hard favorites of the whole league. That is impressive. Yeah, definitely so. I mean, they were top one in their groups, Ehom. And TNC was top one in their group. So it's funny enough that the top one from each group end up meeting in this grand finals. Again, they got knocked out really early. First round of upper bracket already got knocked down by IG. And, you know, they just kind of dominated. They must have learned from that, from that match against IG. Because, Mike, they have looked so good this entire tournament. TNC has as well. Both yeah. teams just amazing plays throughout this entire tournament. Rather, you know, it's a bit of shame, but only one team can win, Mike. Absolutely. It's a bit of shame, though, because yeah. TNC played amazing as well. Absolutely. And on that note, I, I think, John, we have to close this off now. I mean, it's been absolutely fantastic casting the Asia Pro League for 15 days. It's been a hell of a <laughs> lot of fun. Uh, shout out to the viewers that have been watching. I know some of those people have been coming back every single day. So shout out to you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed. Uh, of course, if you did enjoy and you want to support us as the casters, consider following at MLP Dota and at John X Fire on Twitter. It's in the Twitch title. Otherwise, John, any parting words before we, we head off for the Asia Pro League? You know, I, I just hope everyone had fun. Again, if you enjoyed our casting, as Mike mentioned, just follow us on Twitter. We are open to feedback as well. And, you know, if you have any feedback, just tweet it over to us. We'll uh, look into it, see what we can prove. Otherwise, you know, that's going to be us for a fair bit, Mike, I do believe, as nothing is coming up in the next few days. Oh, there's something. There's a tournament, there's a tournament in a week, John. We're not going to mention the name, mm -hmm. but, but we'll be there. Otherwise, guys, we'll catch you guys next time around. Thank you so much for tuning in again. You guys have a great day or night ahead, whichever it is. See you guys next time.